Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of Jizz Talking for a Sunday. We are so honored tonight on this 4th of July weekend to have our good friend Kelly Nichols with us. Kelly, how are we doing tonight? We are doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. I have just been uh, praying to the, the porno gods that Kelly Nichols is going to be here tonight, and she is. And uh, what a great, great time we're going to have tonight. We're going to talk I didn't know this was such a thing. All of a sudden, I have people calling and going, oh, you're going to be on that? I go, this is a thing? They go, it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Mitch just called a while back. Of course, she's having some cell phone problems, but she'll, I'm sure, uh, get yeah. on here in just a little bit. Uh, hey, Richard Pacheco is with us. Richard, why don't you start things off with Kelly? I did <laughs> about, about 50 years ago. and. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. One of the best, one of the best experiences of my entire career in my life. What an honor and a treasure to know her. What a <laughs> gift to have worked with her. And how you doing, sweetie? I'm doing fine. <laughs> I can't believe you gave me that introduction. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're doing really, really good. Um, it, I, it's so cute because I don't have a lot of the business creeping in my life right now so okay. much. but I do have friends hi <laughs> and they they check in with me and tell me what's going on so this is just another like gateway to like meeting up with you guys this is great it is it's just, it's just kind of been a you know of one thing that the pandemic did for us uh was to have um these these shows and it's just been uh so cool that uh uh, I'm trying to spell and talk at the same time. Uh, it's just been so cool that we've been able to do this. And uh, there's a little charge per month because I can hold up to 100 people in the room. I don't want 100 people in the room. But anyway, right. it's such a, <laughs> a, a cool deal. Uh, James Sharp is with James is with us. James, I'm going to unmute you and go ahead and uh, have, a, have a question or a comment for Kelly. Uh, just... Uh... Just want to tell you, uh, Kelly, I'm a big fan. I'm glad to uh, glad to see you here tonight. Yay. Wonderful, so wonderful to see you. I love the hair. I want you to know <laughs> that. it looks beautiful. Um, don't really have a question. I'm going to leave that for everyone else. I'm just going to keep this nice and short and sweet. Just say I'm a huge fan. It's wonderful to see you, and I just uh, it's it's just really great. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sweetie. All right, I'm going to move it on. All okay. right. Thanks, James. Uh, Kelly, we well, last time we saw each other, unfortunately, it wasn't under the best terms. We did a Zoom uh, for uh, a Cass Paley Memorial Service. What mm -hmm. uh, I've seen several videos of you and and you guys uh, uh, gave gave Cass the proper send off on the boat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, what, what's what's life been since Cass has passed away for you? What what have you been up to? Uh wow. Well, primarily up to that point, so much of my life was filled with, with taking care, caretaking casts. I, I didn't realize I had fallen into that till I examined my life after he passed, realized that so much of my day was with Cass. So um, I, I didn't even have a job at that point, or I was working part time at that point, so I could take care of him. And then when he passed, Besides a big hole in my life, I needed to do something. So I uh, had some friends that had these uh, baby twins, really tiny, three-month-old babies. They're twins. And they asked me uh, if uh, I would be minding, you know, being a nanny for them. So I've been a nanny for about a year and a half now uh, with these babies. Uh, and it's, it's so centering because when you go through something traumatic like a death, and you can turn around and be full of sour grapes and life and all this stuff. But I got given a gift of taking care of these little lights that they only live for the now. They're not thinking about the past, the future, anything. And you're around them all the time. And you're in the present tense all the time. It's such a healing thing. It, it was really great for me. I'm going to... Uh, unfortunately, stop uh, taking care of them at the end of June, and it's inspired me to do some more uh, caretaking of babies because I just I, I get along with babies better than people. So. <laughs> A lot of people do. I call them cats. Um, uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Patrick is with us. Patrick with the nice uh, silver beard. There, go ahead. Got a question or comment for Kelly? Oh, thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much, Patrick. I appreciate that. 
Uh, hello, Kelly. How are you doing? Hi. <clears throat> Uh, my question is really uh, about uh, your memories, perhaps, of Cameron Mitchell, who you worked with on oh, yeah. the on the toolbox murders. And then again, right. I I don't know if y'all y'all did not share any scenes, so I don't know if you ran into him on the on the set, oh, yeah. maybe of, of Dixie oh, Ray. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, not on Dixie Ray, but uh, definitely on the toolbox murders. Uh, it was a small set; there weren't a lot of people on it. We were often, we weren't in the same scenes, except for like when he murdered me. <laughs> Other than that, but, you know, we would talk around the coffee table or stuff like that. And he was a very interesting man. And he was sober and uh, making a lot of sense and would tell stories of stuff in the past, which is great. I'm a Hollywood baby and I want to hear all the dirt. And he had it. And he was funny in the toolbox murders he uh there's a song that the murderer is singing and humming and he added that to the character that was his idea i was you know he's just he's there he just how about this and then he just does it and it was great he was just uh first rate and super sweet super sweet he loved the fact that i was really into being chased around the room with him you know that i <laughs> I, I panicked and then I panicked in real life and then I ran from him <laughs> and it worked out really good, but super sweet guy. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm just curious about that stuff. Okay. All right. Well, we had to bring the professor in to, uh, you know, keep the stories all straight tonight. So nobody's going <laughs> to be lying on here. Casey, no. Casey go ahead. <laughs> well, hello. I haven't seen you oh, in a couple hours. <laughs> a couple hours, dude. <laughs> I know. How are you? <laughs> how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Well, I'm at I'm at Rock Bar, so I'm doing the doing the the gay bar thing. Um, but I would not miss this. I'm so I'm so glad that you you were able to finally do this. I know that it's been a long time coming. I um, well, yeah, you were one of the people that pointed out to me that this is a thing. I had no oh. idea that this was going on during COVID. If I had known, I would have been on board sooner. This is really oh. cool. Yeah, no, it's great. Well, also, and you know, I, I'm really glad that uh, that the ghost of Richard Pacheco kicked things off. <laughs> <laughs> the legends. Um, legend. So, you know, my question is: one of my favorite of your performances is from Man Eaters, uh, the Fred Lincoln movie. Um, kind of a wild sex comedy with Joey Silvera, where you played Joey Silvera's wife. Um, <laughs> and I wondered if you could talk a bit about working with Fred Lincoln and, um, and also his relationship with Tiffany Clark. Oh, okay. Well, Fred was a hoot. He was actually one of my friends outside of movies. Um, we would go to Bernard's. And him and Tiffany used to hang out there. And a lot of our friends, uh, Fred was kind of caught up in a kind of a clique of people. And I didn't know all of them really well, but we were all kind of together because we did work on movies and we went to Bernard's. Um, my experience with Fred was there was another movie I was on that he directed, which I don't remember what. But um, he, he's a very hands-on director. He's very patient. Um, Tiffany was around even when she wasn't shooting a scene and they got along great. There was no kind of weirdness or anything because of that. And then just to add to that, I worked for Freddie as a makeup artist later on. And all the qualities that I observed when I worked with him as a star were in place when I worked with him as just a makeup artist. He was extremely kind, very on top of the shooting. I really liked how he shot because he was very enthusiastic. He'd get in there and he'd be like stroking your ego and telling it's going great and keep on going. He was just such a cheerleader. So Freddie was a great cheerleader. I have to tell you that. He was great. So I love hearing that. Yeah, that was a that's that's I that's one of my favorite because I don't think you did enough comedy considering how funny you are. I, I don't feel like you did enough comedies. It's like that. Well, they always cast me as a straight chick. They always, even in Puss in Boots, I was always a straight chick. Right. And yeah, I didn't get to be a Sharon Kane or, or any of the no. funny guys. Yeah, I wish I no. was allowed that. Right. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone, but, well, I mean, and yeah, that's something that I will say about you is that you are actually way funnier than your screen <laughs> persona may let 
people on to knowing Definitely. you were like one of the you're so funny and have such a great sense of humor Aww, so. thank you <laughs> well i will let i will let everyone else ask some questions but you know i love you and we will talk That's soon true. obviously okay. <laughs> all right thanks casey thank you so much it's always great to have casey come around and you know set the story straight christopher <laughs> christopher go ahead Hey, Patrick, how are you? Hey, we're doing good. It, good to see you again, Bob. Yeah, it, it caught me the one Sunday in like forever that I've been able to come to these things. And this and is the Sunday to be here. It's great. No, it's, it's <laughs> wonderful. I'm always happy to come in when uh, one of the Golden Age stars is in the in the building here. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Kelly, I love your <laughs> shirt. My Chemical Romance is... I, I yeah, was, right. <laughs> I was a little old for them, you know, when, when they were popular, but I like I do like their stuff. They, they're, yeah. they're good, uh, they're good <laughs> stuff. Um, so you did body double work for Jessica Lang on King Kong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was that... A, I, I know I'm not supposed to ask two questions, Patrick, so I'm going to combine this together into one. Was Tell us about that experience, and was that what you thought your career was going to be before you got into adult because no was i i had i had no intention of getting into straight acting i was okay. doing it for the money and the money was good and i liked the kind of um outlaw of doing nude modeling and that kind of stuff but i was working for how the modeling agency chn and he was doing stuff that was straight Hollywood and then he was doing the nude modeling stuff so I just happened to be about her height and weight and they just wanted somebody just to be a simple body dip. they didn't want anything big except it turned into a whole bunch of stuff because she was in New York and they needed to test the hands of the gorilla mm -hmm. and they I fit into her costume and there was a little trick where the finger comes down and takes the necklace off my thing and then takes my top off. And they had to work with these hydraulic ape hands, which were really strong. And sometimes you get caught between the finger and the palm and it'd be like kind of brutal. So they were testing me on that. And then at some point they were going to have me do a jump from the hand from behind because my hair was actually her same color uh, and length uh, down into this canyon. And they had me jump, but they never used that part. So basically, I was just in the hand doing the different things that the monkey was going to do to her when she came back from New York. Okay. That was very interesting. Well, uh, that, that's great. And it's uh, wonderful <laughs> to see you here. And, and I will let other people ask their questions at this time. All right. Okay. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Christopher. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being on. Lisa Centrese is with us. Lisa, how are we doing tonight? We're doing, we're doing. My sound's working, so that's a plus. It is. Plus Kelly, I just wanted to say hello. Hi, doll. And, and I was, I'm trying to figure out, because my memory is really kind of not well when it comes to my time in the industry, but did we, we both worked on society affairs. Yes. Did we meet on that film? Because I'm trying to figure yeah, out. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I did beat you. I did okay. beat you. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, that, that's how I knew who you were. And, and when I hear your name come up, I always remember that. So, well, yeah. when you hear your name come up, I always remember that. <laughs> and I thought you were no, great in that movie. Girl, girl, you got to know, that time back then was brutal. It was crazy. Ginger Lynn is one of my best friends, and she was she forgot she was in a three-way with me and Paul Thomas. Oh. And she goes, oh, really? <laughs> we had sex together? <laughs> I, I, it, listen, I just turned 60. Maybe it's the too much pot. I don't know. But there's a lot of stuff I don't remember. I like, do, well, and it was coming at us a lot. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of stuff. You meet you meet new people every yeah. time you do a movie. It's its own energy. It's usually a different location. That's frantic, you know. And yeah. it's in the past. so I totally understand why you and I can't remember shit. <laughs> right? Okay. So I don't feel so. I, you know, I just want to make no, sure. No, no, no. I just turned sixty-eight, and I'm like, okay, I'm 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 owning it. I can't remember shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, and I'm only 60 and I can't remember shit, so. There you go. So I'm good with that. So, yeah, so nice to see you. It's nice to see you you're too. doing well. You look yeah, great. Yeah, you look great. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> so do you. Too. I love your hair. Yeah. Oh, thank I'm an you. accountant now. I'm an accountant. You're an accountant where? What, where? I, I do property accounting for a company called Newmark. They're a huge 
public property management company. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm part of the East Coast property account, accounting team. So I do like a portfolio of properties. But yeah, that's what I do. Nice. Now. I love it. That's perfect. Good for you. Something stable. Something's paying off. Good. Yeah. So and I did hear you were doing makeup. No, I did makeup for almost 30 years because I was Good doing it. When, when I was doing Kelly, I was still doing makeup. I oh, did a okay. lot of makeup. I did it all the way up to uh, 2012 and my shoulder busted on me and then everything kind of went downhill because then I had to have the other shoulder done and I just quit on the makeup. I've had both sh shoulders done so I know. Really? Yes. Really? I've just co completely replaced? <gasps> no, not replaced but screwed back together. Oh, mine were completely replaced. No, mine, oh, mine weren't there yet but I had to have them both done and it stopped me from being Doing. on the show American Ninja Warrior so... Oh, sorry. God. Yep. <laughs> you got to know when you're too old to be doing shit. I know life. <laughs> yeah, but hell, I try, right? I go, I go down trying at least. I love it. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you, girl. So, good for you. Good to see you, though. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're doing this because I, I, you're interesting to me. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I plan to do this a lot more. I had no idea. Like I told. Me too. Um, I, yeah, this is the thing. This is cool. I love it. This is touching back with your past, which you don't want to entirely forget because you're also unique. Nobody understands this unless Thank they've gone you. through it. And some of my friends like Ginger and Janie, um, I'm friends with them, not even because I like them. No, I'm kidding. No, but, I know what you're but saying. Because <laughs> we have shared experiences and Absolutely. there's nobody understands it. Unique you experience. It. Very unique. And it was, there was only, what, a couple hundred people talks back then? Right, 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 right. We were like the five people they watched fucking. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so yeah I, you know i just came to terms with it i struggled a lot really? i struggled a lot with it kelly mm -hmm. and i just got to the point where i'm telling everyone i told my boss i just told everyone you know what you've known me all these years and here's what yeah. i did right right and i own it and i'm not ashamed of it no you know i'm not i'm Especially not it's so funny because I think the current crop of girls is giving us a better reputation. <laughs> I mean, we, we did, we were acting and we were in movies and we didn't do that much. We really took care of our parts and I, no escort in sight. And right. I'm like, I'm right. sorry. I own the eighties. I'm proud of it. Me too. You know what? I yeah. am too. Definitely. Yeah. I'm definitely proud of it, but it's good, good to see you. You, you yeah. too, sweetie. Bye. And, and Lisa will be seeing each other in less than two weeks. So can't wait for that either. So that's right. Fantastic. You bet. And let's go to Jose Duval. Jose is with us and we're going to unmute Jose so he can hear what he has to say. Jose, go ahead. Hey, so. where is he? Hilly, Hilly. Where's Hi. Hilly? Yeah, can Hi. you see me? Can yes, you see that's me? it. That's yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Hi, sweetie. Because I want to turn on with Kelly Nichols. <laughs> You remember that? That was a danger. That was a dangerous film. <laughs> yes, we were. I was working with uh, Chelsea Blake, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't know where she is. She disappeared. And after that, we work together for uh, Ron Jeremy. Oh right. We did that thing in the video store. Oh, where. I don't well, remember the name of that movie, but we were working in the video store. We were selling videos your tape and you were working with that guy from uh, Philadelphia a very nice gentleman from Philly oh wow I don't remember do, do you know who directed it uh Ron Jeremy oh Ron Jeremy directed it yeah and I said yeah, yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a little piece of paper with oh you're gonna do that you're gonna do this you're gonna do that oh That's my god it. That's funny oh my god Jane Pepper was Dang. in there who was? Jenny Pepper. Jenny Pepper, right. Yes. Sweetheart. And after that, we work uh, together at uh, Taboo American Style. At where? Taboo, Taboo American Style. Oh, to, oh, Taboo, the sixth one. Yeah. The, 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 the big one. Uh, with, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ari Pachard. Yeah, I, all I know is I was not present for it. I, I wasn't thrilled with the content, and I just uh, kind of checked out on that one. So. Yeah, you, you had just one scene with, 
with my, what's her name, uh, Sandra Bernard, my middle age crisis. Mm. She was oh. my middle, she was my middle age crisis. <laughs> 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 but it's so good to see you. I saw you last you time. Too, at, uh, yes. Where did you see me last? At uh, what's his name? Uh, the the show in New York. You came for a the, movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Peace thing in Anthology Film Archives, which is where yes, our that's it. From. Yeah, that was so fun. Anyway, it's always fun to hear from you and to see you. You too, yes. sweetie. I'm so glad you're doing well. Uh, you see here. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. That's well. Life, life, life. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm, I'm 81 now. You know. Oh my gosh! Good for <laughs> you. You you made it to 81. That's good. Yeah. But don't forget, I started in the business very late. I was 42 when I did my first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was an antique. You were a child. Huh? Yeah. And you were a that child. Was, that was with Maylin, so that was great. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Maylin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I kiss you, and uh, I will see you once we come to New York. I see you. I see you soon. I love okay. it. I love you. Hi, honey. Time. Bye. Thanks, Jose, for stopping by. Always a pleasure to have Jose with us. Uh, Stephen is with us. And Stephen, we usually got to get you off before you got to go to work. So we thought we'd get you right in. Uh, thanks. I appreciate that, especially with the problems with the Zoom thing earlier and rebooting. But I, Kelly, it's so good to see you again. This you was, too. This was I the remember last time you. Together. And yeah. uh, <laughs> again, through, because of Casey. And uh, like I said back then, you were. You were my first adult crush, and oh. that, issue of, that issue of Hustler on the cover with you and the, the lip and the tongue, <laughs> <laughs> that was, <laughs> uh, I don't really have any question because I just want to say you look great, and it's good to oh. see you, and I don't yeah. know what's best already, so I don't know what to say <laughs> oh don't worry about it sweetie it's just, it's just the fact we're alive we're healthy we're able to talk this is all good yeah yeah but you're looking great you're looking great Thank you pride month <laughs> <laughs> all right steve we'll appreciate it and uh i i hear you have a new family member so that's always good to see too oh yeah yeah he's somewhere probably causing trouble <laughs> All right. Hey, let's uh, swing things over to uh, James Bartholomew is with us. James, great to have you on tonight. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, Kelly. Hi, darling. Now, Kelly and I didn't perform on camera, but we worked no, no, on no. a we, lot of movies where you I were doing the makeup. makeup. Artist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For all of those wonderful, wonderful parodies that we did. Yeah. <gasps> uh, God, and you were in, and you were in. You were in so many of them. Yes, and um, it was Kelly who made me and my fellow performers and stars on that look so great. And just Aww, thank, thank you, you. and uh, we're here celebrating you today. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Um, you look really good. You look like. Well, uh, yeah, no, I mean, your face, you, you, you're like really slender right through here, and you, you look really good, really healthy. That's good, because here... <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you didn't have to do a reveal. <laughs> Thanks so, for sharing. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm doing uh, pregnant male um, gangbangs here now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be doing male lactating nine. Oi, uh, oi, uh, oi, uh, oi, oi, yeah. oi, 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 <laughs> What? I thought it was okay to have tits and ass on this show. <laughs> oh, it's totally, we approve. We approve. But okay. <laughs> Anyways, Kelly, uh, we all love you very much, and thank uh, you. Thank you for all the wonderful years um, that you've given us in this industry and many more to come. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate it. Hey, Howard's with us. Howard uh, sent me a picture earlier of you two together and, and uh, great, to, great to see you here, Howard. 
Yes, it's uh, great to be back, Patrick. Thanks. I haven't gotten to zoom in on one of these things probably in a year or so, but it was Kelly Nichols, so I had to. Ah! All, the cards, all the cards landed great, and I'm home today, so I said I have to zoom in on her, and I had to bust oh. up my phone that shirt and the ring I wore that you licked at the In the Flesh series that Casey did. <laughs> and it's so ah. great to see you. I love the purple hair. It's fantastic. It's brightening up Thank New York, you. even though you're all the way yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just, uh, let me ask, I, I have a question. Um, I'm very curious. I know a lot of the uh, adult uh, actresses um, segued from uh, the adult films into the fetish world. And I was curious about that. Was that something that was just uh, a transitional thing that you did because it was accessible? Or what was the deal with that? Because I know Sharon Kane did it and Sharon Mitchell and a number of others. Well, I, I did it. Uh, because I had stopped doing in front of the camera stuff and I was doing makeup. And then people were asking me to do fetish stuff. Now, I have five brothers, uh, but I am I stand up for myself. And I, I I'm, don't dominate men, but I could see where I, I could do a an acting domination. So I worked for, oh, I forget, Harmony, H-O-M, I, H-O-M? Was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I did. I ended up, so I was doing makeup at the same time they were hiring me during the 90s into 2000 to do dominance on H-O-M. And it was just, I mean, it was less of a thing and more like, okay, additional income. I don't feel weird, even though I have two kids doing this i don't know what my line in the sand was but <laughs> somehow this is a little easier to swallow as opposed to going straight back into acting in front of a camera so i did that and then i actually was really good at it so i kept cl- collecting clothing and stuff and then um with oh i forget her name why am i forgetting her name she was my partner we had a website called pure domination wow we did because the websites were going like gangbusters all till about 2005 and then they all folded. But up until that point, so we had a successful uh, website where I would dominate women, which I had no problem doing. It didn't, it didn't feel like a thing that got me off, but I felt I could talk myself through it and I could like play with the girls. And I just thought I was really good at it. So I dominated the girls and she dominated uh, the boys i can't remember her name oh my god why am i having a problem um so i used that later on as something to get into just because i thought i was really good at it and again i think line in the sand i didn't think domination and stuff like that because my clothes never came off i just kept you know sexy leather pleather shit going on (laughs) so it, it was it was safe i was good at it and um it was it was kind of enjoyable because it did call for acting skills to be involved. Oh, great! Well, you were good at it. You were great at it, and that's uh, the very <laughs> first way I discovered you. And I'm glad that you did it because oh, I was able really? to discover you through that oh. and follow your career based on that. So, and and even when the first time I met you at the In the Flesh, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this is actually you. I didn't even think about it the first time until after I had met you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. So it blew my mind. It blew my mind. So both worlds colliding was fantastic. Yeah, and this you been... found the opposite world. That's <laughs> right. funny. I'm I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for doing this. And great to hear that you're going to do more. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> thanks a lot, Howard. Appreciate you being uh, on the show. Hey, don't forget, next week is our preview show to the Miami Exotica. We'll have uh, uh, some of the folks that will be at Exotica. I'll reach out to some of those folks. We'll have them in the room. Also, I'll be having, along with that, I'll be bringing some swag. I've got these yeah. uh, Tumblr gizmos here, the Jizz Talking Tumblers. Hey, we're Jizz Talking. And I know my buddy Danny Black is going to be there, and he's going to have some of these Jizz Talking hats. And so we'll have, <laughs> we'll have everybody. That's cut. a mess. <laughs> as, as Kelly would say, these are a thing. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, what we have going on. But that will be next week, uh, the Exotica preview show. And then the week after that, we'll do the wrap-up show actually in Miami from uh, from the hotel. So, uh, hey, we have Kathy Brown with us. Kathy, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, too. And it's great to see you, Kelly. Um, we have actually been at the same events, but nobody ever introduced us. We, I was at um, Anthology Film Archives events. Um, I'm Jean, oh. uh, 
Veronica Hart's cousin through marriage. Uh, Michael oh, really? was my cousin. And oh, wow. um, I've always admired your work. I've always loved your oh, work. Honey, thank you. Thank you. And, and you're just a ray of sunshine. You're just so <laughs> wonderful and endearing and funny. Um, and one of my favorite films that you were in was In Love. Um, uh. I, it was so convincing. And you and Jerry Butler really acted the hell out of it and it really seemed like you were in love you know you really we, we were in love for a little bit or, or infatuation with each other a little bit okay. so that helped <laughs> right right I was going to ask I helped him write his biography raw talent and oh, I yeah. was going to ask what it was like to work with him because he's the kind of guy I loved him but either it's you know you love him or you hate him so I had and, such and, a time with him sweetie i never had a bad i i knew raw talent he was gonna do some nasty stuff so i i I had somebody else read to me what he wrote but when i worked with him i worked with him a couple times he was cute he was funny he was always supportive always and we both were really into the acting part so in love we were both trying to like cry and and be very emotional we both were like Mm -hmm. kind of one-upping each other like you know this is gonna go good you better cry i'm gonna cry we're gonna do good and then one time uh i i had him over to my house i had open house and my as an open house present he brought me a live lobster Oh my god! And he that sat on the like floor, him. and it just crawled around till we finally put it out of its misery in a pot. But that Aww. was that was Jerry. <laughs> that that was that was. And, um, and, and the raw talent. All he said about me was, "I was a little bit boring or vanilla or whatever." And I'm going, "Oh, I'll take it. That's fine." <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That, yeah. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Also, Absolutely. I I send um, I send regards from Sue Nero, who is not techie. She she cannot like manage doing tech and get on a show like this. But she sends her love. Ah, uh, oh, and also yeah. also Eric Monty. Eric Monty was the one who Jose was trying to remember his name. The guy mm. from Philly. I think you were in two films together, and he says oh, to oh. to say hi. Oh, please say hi back and I'll look that up and remember him. I will. I will. Take care. Thank you. Right. Bye, Thank honey. You a lot, Kathy. Appreciate you being with us. Always great to have you on. Lorenzo's with us. Lorenzo was a guest last week along with Casey Carter. He's probably survived all of the fan uh, fan mail and autograph requests from last week, and he's back hey. on. Lorenzo, how's it going tonight? How are you doing, Patrick? Good, good. Yeah, yeah I'd like to say a special hello to Kelly. Mm. And uh, I ask you about the newer generation. Have they taken to guidance from you or are they acting as though there wasn't a generation before them that has paved the way? Well, you're describing Gen Z. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, because uh, I was on shows with Ginger Lynn where we were having, and this was about five years ago, having girls on that were like, you know, between 18 and 21 and it's still the same, you know, they, they think they discovered porno. They think they're, they're the rock and star and they don't look back and see the history of what was before them, even to the point where they don't even take advice on how to make themselves stand out. They think they're going to do it on social media and they're going to do it their way. So I think that's one of the reasons we don't have a lot of standout stars. You're so I think that, Yeah. I, I feel bad because I, I think I did kind of understand where the history I was coming in from the 70s, I was in in the 80s, and I did understand how these people had to work to get known and how slowly they were accepted and all that kind of stuff. So that actually helped me when I was in the 80s understand that they were before me trailblazing what then I came into, which was the 80s, which was it was golden, but it was golden because of them. You know, and by the way, I love your voice. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's sexy. Thank, as thank, thank you, and uh, I'm glad Patrick is having people like yourself. You know that uh, I say are authentic and true. That you know we will never forget how it really was with with class. Right. Yeah, and that's all mythos at this point. Between social media, kind of, kind of just diluting everything, politics. Mm-hmm. 
you know, porno is just diluting it because it's not real. It's yes, just yes, that's very, very true. Very true. And, and I think because I was lucky enough to be before that, I didn't have delusions. And I think you have delusions living on social media. So I feel bad. I feel bad. I, I wish we could have some kind of master class in this kind of thing so people could come forth and, you know, we could talk and, you know, make, make changes in our business. But right now, the almighty dollar is guiding it. So, you know, whatever. All right. Thanks, Lorenzo, for uh, stopping by and, and uh, asking some questions there. I, I remember last year at Exotica in, in Chicago, Seika was there. She was in our booth. And she was doing very well on uh, uh, products and signing stuff. I mean, there were grown men walking up to her with tears in their eyes that she was <laughs> there. And I love these, it. Some of these younger girls were like, eh, 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 eh. I said, you know, you got a line out there. ought to be a line from here to the door for all you young gals up here to kiss her ass for the, the <laughs> thing that she did for the business that helped you out. And, right. Uh, and I, you know, it's like, no, oh. they're very snarky. They're very snarky. And sit there and try and sell your, your $50 shit and, and Seika's raking it in. So <laughs> and, and smiling and, and uh, having a good time. <laughs> Jamie's with us. Jamie was somebody I met uh, last uh, year in, or earlier this year in uh, LA. It Jamie. It's great to have you back. Oh, thanks. It's great to be back, Patrick. It's very nice to meet you, Kelly. Um <laughs> I have to concur. Your hair is fabulous. You look great. Um, Thank you. Um, my question, I mean, I guess it kind of piggybacks off of um, Lorenzo's comment question and what you just talked about, but um, just some of your observations about how the industry has changed going from a golden age actress, superstar to a makeup artist on, you know, sets more recently, like just... Mm -hmm observations of how the industry in general has changed um yeah. i think i can do that fairly well in a way other people can't in that after i was kelly i i had been doing makeup before i actually did makeup in the 70s so i still had that skill and after i got out of uh being kelly nichols in front of the camera i went back to my skills as makeup artist so i kind of picked up where i left off and the 80s was truly, you know, film gradually turning to VCR and stories that got a little shorter, but but still strong stories. And I worked throughout the 90s into 2010 as a makeup artist. And it was very interesting from behind the scenes. I could truly make an observation and not be it personally biased because it was involving me in front of the camera. It was me observing what was going on in front of the camera, how much the girls got paid, how serious they took their role. Uh, were we making movies? Were we making just spots? Um, it was really interesting to see how the stories still carried through the 90s till about 96 and then you started seeing it break apart where people were doing but one two three and it, it just started getting broken apart as if you were going back to television or something so the big movies started which continued from the 80s into the 90s because i worked on so many big michael men just major players that were doing big out of the gate stuff and then there was like almost no interest in it that in terms of big movies and i think some of that was because it went from theater to your small screen in your house which you could fast forward which i think validated movies back in the day because you were in a theater and that was your expectation to see a story once you bring it into the home there's not a big necessity except for maybe connecting with the characters. So you cared about who got fucked and stuff like that. But again, in the, in the home, people could fast forward and there was more like, uh, because now the internet was on top of it. If you had a fetish, you have an idea, you can go straight to that. And once you go to something that you're turned on to, 
you don't care about the story. You're just going for what turns you on, you know, immediate gratification. And this is what I slowly started seeing happening into, you know, the later on 2000s to where now it's just people buy slices of sex, you know. Mm. Yeah. The people that are doing the big movies are losing money. They're just not, you know, there's no big interest in it except for retro. Mm. Does that answer your question? Yes, very well. Thank you. Thank you. That was great to meet you. Always great. Very good to meet you. You bet. Hey, uh, Sean Elliott's with us. Sean's going to be in Miami as well, too, kind of hanging out here and there. Great to see Sean back again. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Good to be here. And apologies for being late. I have family that came in, but I feel a kindred spirit to Kelly. I like to share a reason why, and that's why I ran down here. I had to see you because... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when I, I was in the business, too, from 81 to 84 in New York, so mm-hmm. I, can, I can smell Bernard's. I can smell the, <laughs> the club. Yes. And, and in 81, uh, I had just done a, my first film for Lenny Kurtman, the Catskill mm-hmm. film. I don't know if you remember. There was a big bus that got busted in the Catskills. Ron Jerry yes. Played. I was in that series of films. And the second film, I met Chuck. And oh, okay. He said, I want to hire you. You'll do some work. And they had just finished roommates. Mm. And then I saw that you were in it. I said, who's she? And, and Veronica and Stash, who I got to work with, because he says, I'm going to hire you in the next movie, which was Luscious. Luscious. And Bill, Bill Slobodian, uh, mm-hmm. it was his debut. And we went to Puerto Rico to do it. So when I see your name over the years, and I was a, a mainstream actor, too, did some soaps and NBC in Brooklyn on Avenue Web for Another World and stuff. I know you know all this stuff. Right. And I saw that you went mainstream with things, too, mm-hmm. and in your makeup world. So I'm actually, the first time I've been on the show ever that I had to be here, my, my hands are shaking. And, <laughs> that, and, and, and the people, a lot of people on this know me, and my hands never shake about shit. And I've, I've had the luxury of kind of coming back into what we're seeing, but you're saying what I can't say now because I know what I'm right. <laughs> but, but I feel everything. I feel at three o'clock in the morning at a club. I feel Bernard's, I, I, mm-hmm. Bobby Esther and, and oh, Jamie yeah. and Plato's and, and oh, all yeah. this stuff, man. And so yeah. I'm going 42 years back with you and I lived it. My biggest regret, obviously, is what I'm going to say is I didn't get a chance to meet you in person. Oh, uh, but we I share mean, that time frame. And so you and I know what we're talking about. Yeah. If I say Plato's retreat and I was the last days I was there with Jamie Gillis, who decided to to like surprise me here. We're going to. Okay. I've heard about it. We went there and then there's Jamie trying to shove me into a a locker. (laughs) He liked the room on the left past the pool. (laughs) <laughs> and he used to play around with everybody. I had a guy that stayed with me that Jim South brought in, Jesse St. James, this guy. Oh, Jesse. And I remember Jesse. Yeah. And I went into Plato's and there's Jamie and Jesse. And I'm going, oh, okay, this is new to me. Jamie goes, come on in. I says, no, I'm cool. I'm going to the other room. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so you, then you go to that pool and eat all the food. And it oh, was, yeah. it was, it was amazing. Pretty- Scummy towards the end. There was yeah, I got, got a little scummy, and the food was cold, and yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people here, but last thing I want to say, and if you're interested, Patrick can put us together. I actually just got off the phone last night with somebody from that exact time. Uh, 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 Kathy was talking about Ron Hud. Well, I just got off with uh, his ex, uh, Lisa B, who oh. I've been talking with for the last. If you remember her at all. Uh, she mm-hmm. worked in the early 80s, Lisa, and um, she's hiding behind it. She doesn't really want to show her her, her, her face and, and then all respect to her. But we're having good chats and maybe we can get her out if she wants to. But uh, I'm going to tell yeah. her that I spoke with you and I'm sure she'll just love that. And thank Oh, you. sure. I, I remember Lisa. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, she was a doll. Uh, all mm-hmm. of them. We were the only and ones. She, that- was, she was really up for doing anything. She didn't have to be a star. She go, I just want to be in the picture. She was great. Yeah, so eclectic, right? She was mm-hmm. very eclectic. Well, wonderful to meet you, Kelly, Miss Nichols. Uh, I'm glad I got down here. Thanks for, for calling my name, Patrick. I would have been pissed if you didn't. <laughs> Takes oh. me back a lot of memories there. You know, it's, it's always nice to be included, isn't it, Sean? 
<laughs> I took 200 pictures. You better give a backstory on that. And I don't, I can't see that. So I thought you were in it. I'm says, sorry, I, can't wait, I, I can't wait to hang out with all my friends at Exotic and he has all these pictures <laughs> of all these people and I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, no. Well, it was nice talking to you, Kelly. I got to go now. We'll see. You. Okay. <laughs> Take care, Sean. Bye. Right. Hey, Kevin's with us. He's uh, in his car on the road roving reporter. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, howdy, uh, Patrick. Thanks for setting this up. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for all your wonderful work over the years. And thank you for helping Cass uh, pack up all his stuff when you made that wonderful donation to our film archive here at the university. Really, yeah. really appreciate all your help on that. Uh, oh, cool. uh, he tried to he tried to sell me uh, Bruce Seven's uh, bar at, at some point. <laughs> uh, uh, my question is, uh, if you have any uh, particularly strong and fond memories about being a member of Club Ninety, you know you were you were you know West Coast, uh, and uh, you know most of the uh, no, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Uh, no, I, lived uh, I lived out there. No, I you did. You did. Time. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, uh, just uh, what some of your uh, most interesting and fond memories of uh, your time with uh, that group of extraordinary women might be. Okay, um, it's I'm a little on the sidelines on that because I was with them for the first year, and it was right. really good having like the support of women because that was the whole thing. It was a support for women, and I went sideways with them when I wanted to open up. Uh, the, the meeting to other women that were in pain and they had felt very comfortable with each other and they didn't want anybody else coming in. So I tried to get a second meeting going on so I could bring in other women that would really benefit from this, but it, it never really got to fruition. And I'm really sad about that. And then also at some point I was the only one working of all the girls. They were, they had all retired and I had to literally jet out of town and go to California and do this and this. So mm. I wasn't able to show up for as many meetings towards the end. And they kind of said, well, if you're not going to show up for the meetings, you shouldn't be here. So, you know, it, I love the women. I didn't like how it ended, but they are amazing women. They, I, they will always have my love. You know, yeah. it just uh, d didn't work out for me and them. I thought the concept was really strong. And in any other situation, I, I think I would have tried harder to, like, set up something for other women because it was very beneficial, at least for the first year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks yeah. a lot, Kevin, for stopping by, and thanks for being patient. We'll get to everybody. Uh, we've got the time. John is with us. And, John, you met, uh, you met a celebrity over the weekend, didn't you? I did, Patrick. Good to see you and everybody here. Um, I was fortunate enough when I was going to an autograph show called The Hollywood a Hollywood show. I turn to my right side in line, and who do I see? Our lovely Christy Kenyon in line. Oh, Christy! Yay! <laughs> she, we we hugged, and uh, we uh, we said we we're happy to see each other. And she was having a wonderful day. And yes, mm -hmm. my yesterday. Ah, I love Christy. We were Miss married Kelly. to the same guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Miss Kelly, it's so wonderful to uh, talk to you today. Thank you uh, for coming. Um, I really don't have any questions, but I just want to let you know. I think you were, I think you were the f the first hardcore film that I snuck onto my parents um, on television um, ah. uh, as a teenager. And if I if I want to say it was Bon Appetit, mm. uh, but I hope it was then, a better film. Like, oh, Kelly Nichols? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as soon as I became actual age, I, I, I actually bought a VHS copy of um, Roommates because oh, I thought it was just cool. a brilliant film. Um, oh, yeah. Chuck was good. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. You know, there were three of my favorites in one film. And, <laughs> and it was just, a, I mean, Aside from just being an adult film, it's just a great film in general. Thank and, you. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to ask, I do actually have one question. Sure. Um, would you consider uh, doing conventions like some of your other colleagues have begun doing where people can actually do uh, meet and greets with you to actually um, meet you in public? Mm. 
I um, I've, I've and not that I've retired, Kelly, but I mean, I there's a lot of interesting expectations when you come out and you are that character again. Everything from examining the physical, which at my age is like harsh to look at, and then making yeah. sure that you have the energy to do it. And um, I went to a couple signings, uh, Hollywood signings, and. If people aren't coming up to your table and talking to you, you're sitting there with your little sad sack of pictures <laughs> and magazines <laughs> looking so sad. And it was just like there was kind of a pathetic part of that that was like, I kind of don't want to be in that band house. Like when I go to places where they're playing a movie and there's a question and answer, something like that. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything like that. Yeah. But sitting around at conventions, waiting for people to come up to me, I just don't think I could deal with that. So, but, yeah. That's a fair answer. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Don. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, anyway, um, I, I will say that we need to do another private signing where people send me some stuff and I send it to you and you sign it all up. And, and that's always a, a fun time for those who uh, who want to get some items signed and and we can certainly do that again, maybe mid-September uh, would be a good mm -hmm. day for that. So anyway, we'll see about that. And Zach is with us. Zach, uh, you have a question or a comment for Kelly? Yeah, hi. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Hi, Kelly. Uh, 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 I can't speak for the, I guess, the modern generation. I'm X generation. But I, I can tell you this. Um, the first ever adult film that I ever saw was Ultra Flesh. And I know you don't have any speaking role in that, but mm -hmm. you do have my favorite scene in the film. Um, really? With Ron. I don't have to talk about Ron, but it has a, a pretty amazing cast. It's one of the greatest kiss I think I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Yes, nature. Svetlana. Svetlana put that together. Svetlana. Yeah. Sika, Serena, uh, John Leslie, J Jamie Gillis. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving somebody. Oh, Lisa Delu. And I just, I guess my only question was, uh, do you have any memory of that? And uh, it seemed like such a fun time. It's an insane, uh, uh, you know, shoot that there has to be some story connected to that that film. Um, my story with that was, which a lot of people don't know, that is actually my first X-rated scene. I hadn't done anything for Chuck or anybody. I, it was something out in California. I had shot for Svetlana doing um, gay stuff, uh, girl gay, and uh, I kind of made a conscious decision to just do it i i was trying to get back out to the east coast because i was trying to get back together the remnants of a bad marriage and it was purely fueled by money and i like jeremy okay uh would be my first pick <laughs> but 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 uh they made it comfortable enough for me so i wasn't traumatized by it and i could go ahead and then later on do films um and that was just uh, kind of finding my way and seeing like what worked, didn't work. And it was, it was literally one day. So there wasn't even a lot of camaraderie on the set or anything. It was one day. Well, it's just one scene, but, but I guess right. that's the first for both of us. <laughs> my yeah. first oh, movie okay. and your first scene. So. My first scene. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. You. you bet. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Charles from San Francisco is with Charles. Go ahead. Hi, Kelly. It's nice Hi. to meet you. I wonder if I was like the only person who went to like Blockbuster to get adult movies and actually watched the whole movie all the way through. Because <laughs> I feel like I wasn't, but you know, I like the plot. I like the storyline. I like the whole, the acting. I like the whole thing, you know. Um, wow. I am like, I'm kind of like blown away because I had no idea you were in King Kong. And I remember watching that when I was, a young teenager and Jessica mm -hmm. Lang and I had no idea that that was your body. And I'm like, Oh my <laughs> man. Um, I don't know if I have a question. I'm like, you know, I, I will say this. I do hope that you do do a private signing with Patrick. So if you're, if you're looking for votes, I'll vote for that. Oh, so, okay. No problem. I'm with Patrick. <laughs> so, but uh, thank you again. Thank you so much for joining us as well. Oh, sweetie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Charles. Malarkey is with us. Malarkey, go ahead. How you doing? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of the industry for a long time. I remember going to my first uh, 
built the uh, movie at the at the Austin Theater in Kew Gardens on Fort, you know, and uh, it was Fansation with Ron Jeremy. But uh, Kelly, I just want to let you know one of my favorite movies with you is with great expectations with uh, uh-huh. Edward Edwards and uh, Joanna mm-hmm. Storm. And yeah, it, it was a cast because basically the movie made fun of the industry itself, which right. would made it exactly. really enjoyable. Exactly. That's, yeah. So I really want to enjoy. What? what uh, did you ever work with uh, with Lisa Thatcher? She was based Lisa, on no, the no. Uh, I I know her, but no, I never got a chance to because I was on the East Coast for most of my shooting, and they would have me go to the West Coast to Hollywood and to San Francisco. But very, yeah, I wasn't able to play with all the players over there, unfortunately. Yeah, because like I said, during the late seventies and eighties, it basically revolutionized the industry, and now today. It's basically the, the guy says, hi, how you doing? I'm a film star. Could you? And then all of a sudden they're doing it. And all of a sudden right. it's like, it's like, yeah. it's, like yeah. it's like the old grinders. It's like the old loops. The only difference yeah. is they're story uh, you know, story. Yeah. yeah. Story with story. 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 It's just like 30, 30 minutes of uh, doing it. And it's not even doing it right. It's like, all right, enough. <laughs> not even, it's not Good. even a lot. Right yeah. <laughs> I know. It's terrible. It's terrible. And then um, Haven said the same thing. What about Annette? She said the same thing when I first met her on Facebook. She oh, said yeah, that yeah. She has changed over the years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, the actors and actresses don't even know what it's like to do a real film. They do yeah. bits, you know, and, you know, nobody's corrected them and nobody's making any kind of changes in it. And, you know, it's sad. Yeah, it is kind of. All right. Well, Malarkey, appreciate you stopping by and stop many time. Like I said, next week is going to be our Exotica preview show. So we'll be talking to the folks. I will bring some in that are going to Exotica in Miami uh, the week after that. That's going to be the 14th through the 16th. So look forward to having a few folks like that stop by. Um, uh, Richard, anything uh, you else uh, want to say? Anything else uh, about Kelly while we got you here? Well. Yeah, lots and lots. <laughs> I think Kelly and I had more drama off camera than on camera. But um, I write about this in hindsight a lot. So I won't, those of you that read the book, you know some of these stories. Those of you who want some of them, read the book. But I'll tell you mm-hmm. this. I was on a movie with Kelly. We didn't have a sex scene in the movie. I was working with Brooke West and the only sex scene I had. But I saw Kelly for the first time and went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess got stupid. Um, you know, there's a lot that's talked about when you're an actor and you're in movies and what it's like to be married off camera in your life. But when you come to the set, you put your clothes in the locker room and you walk out on set, you're your character. So right. when I saw her, I just got stupid. <laughs> Um, I didn't want to get stupid. I was married. I didn't want to be feeling the feelings I was having, not that, but I had them. So um, I, nothing happened that day between us. We had a scene where we had to fight a little bit, but it was not sex. And mm-hmm. uh, I, we went on with our career. So finally, uh, we're hired opposite each other. Bob VZ for Playboy <laughs> Channel. It's going to be a sex scene for Playboy. Kelly Nichols. Okay, I've been waiting for this for like a year. And uh, we get into the sex scene, and I'm an actor that was very hit or miss with whether I was going to get aroused or not, get an erection or not. And there was no Viagra, none of that shit. So I had a career anyway, because I could act, and they tried me out. So well, there was no problem getting an erection with Kelly. And as soon as I got inside her, the director goes, cut! <laughs> what? And he said, this is a softcore movie, I don't need any real fucking, just don't uh just act it well <laughs> normally when you do that in a porn film you're doing that because you're saving your orgasm for the cum shot right. if you're not saving it for something the <clears throat> worst fucking we all see in porn f- movies is actors acting like they're fucking like they're fucking it's yeah. hideous anyway little baby it's so overacted. It's so you know they're not fucking. You know, and yeah. it goes on for half an hour. That television is filled with that R-rated shit. What a waste of everybody's time. Anyway, 
So we start the scene up again. I get hard again. I can't stop myself. I might as well go inside. I did. Cut. <laughs> he did this like three or four times. We start arguing. I said, look, you're going to get a scene. You're not going to see my dick. I know how to cheat the camera angle. Don't worry about it. He goes, no, I don't want any real fucking going on. And I'm going, this guy's fucking crazy. And um, okay, I'm the actor. He's the director. He ruled. We do the whole scene his way. <laughs> And uh, after we're backstage, Kelly says to me, I should tell you that he and I used to be boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> and I think we saw a little bit of jealousy on the set today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you very much. It is, I'll do briefly part two. <laughs> Ch Chuck Vincent wanted me to be the lead actor in In Love and work with Kelly Nichols, a big movie. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Okay, great. So I had never met Chuck Vincent, and he arranges for me and my wife to come to Palm Springs uh, for a weekend. So we meet, so they'll, 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 we'll negotiate the, the movie, and, and I'll be in it. And we go to Palm, and Sam Weston, is, Anthony Spinelli is brokering this for me. So he's there too. And he introduces me to Chuck, and we all have a wonderful night. And uh, then uh, Sam says, okay, you all set? I said, fine. He said, oh, I'm going to go to bed. And he goes off and leaves me and my wife with Chuck and his cameraman. Well, they started asking me, what are my concerns? And at that point in time, we were trying to get pregnant. And I said, oh, number one, I won't work with a woman who's having an active outbreak of herpes. And by then, we'd have a lot of alcohol. Uh, so Chuck's cameraman goes, Oh, you don't want to get herpes. He's fucking making fun of me. No, I don't want to get herpes because herpes is the difference between actual childbirth and a cesarean section. You don't, you can't give birth if you have an active outbreak of herpes. So I was not playing around with that. We were for real trying to get pregnant and they were making fun of me and I didn't like that. And before you know it, all this love and harmony that's happening and the cameraman and I put his arm around me and I just threw it off, you know. And Chuck, at that point, you could just see the light go out in his eyes. He goes, he can't handle him. Um, and so I didn't get the part. Jerry mm. Lewis gets the part. And Jerry Lewis, and I would have loved to have been in that movie with you. But oh, in, yeah. in the biggest picture, I'm glad I didn't. Because I was in love with you. And, <laughs> and that, was, that wasn't about the movie. <laughs> that oh. was about real life. And that was one of these Hollywood things. The danger when you're an actor and you're making love with somebody, you can't act that. And if no. you, you, you know that, you, you do it. And then, especially if you're in, a, in Hollywood shit, because that can go on for six months before you go home. At least right. in porn, it's three or four days or a week or something when we were working. Right. Um, but it would have made everything much more difficult for me. So I, in a way, it was horrible that I didn't get to do that. And in the other way, I'm, I'm kind of grateful because I've been married for 50 years and and, right. Uh, no, I see the point. I would have loved to have you uh, work with me on that. <laughs> yeah. So much. There's tears right. in all that. There, there's, right. I'm, you know, I'm being cavalier with it, but I do love you. I've always <laughs> loved you. And I wish you nothing but the best in life. You too, sweetie. Love you so much. Sean, you had a quick question. Sean, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, Sean, you. Oh, no, I was just curious. I was thinking when he's talking about it, if the cameraman was Larry Re I, it was Larry. Larry Ravine, yeah. I, yeah, I just figured because he was always with Chuck and I worked with Larry. I well, never had a know, problem with him. And I was also thinking you were working with Svetlana on the other film and that must have been a trip because she was, <laughs> she was part yeah. of horror. Yeah, but anyway. I was trying not to say his name because... Yeah, I wasn't given the last name, I, but... but In you know, recent years, he, <laughs> we've talked about that in recent years and he doesn't remember it. Like it, it, it he sort of pretends it didn't happen. So I let it be. Well, uh, I'm not going to you know. throw anybody on the bus either, but I remember in Luscious, but, uh, we were in a, I had just run a mile with Samantha was stuck on the beach, and he wanted a sun-up scene. He wanted a money shot in the sun. Up. A lot of love making in this. I'm 140 pounds, 1981, doing, doing blow, no <laughs> doubt. And, and, and I'm, my heart's racing like this. And then he says, okay, eat this, fuck this, turn around, sport it, then shoot. And I was having a little bit of difficulty and Larry got all over my 
my ass, really. And we actually had to go to Queens and do the pickup. They made a cave over at Adventure Studios, and we finished that shot there. And you're so right, Richard. You, you all know this from those days. It is not the same. When you edit a shot, that's not my dick. That's not. <laughs> yeah. And then what's that face there? And a lot of the films that, that Kelly did, I'm sure, and I know Richard did, I did it with Scoundrels, is they would do softcore versions of it. And mm -hmm. so you would have your scene and then you would do your camera angle and open it up, right? Guys, you'd have to open it up for the hardcore and close it for the, for the softcore because they might be shooting something in France or something. They want a softcore version of it. And um, that, I could tell the difference just when they went to, so, just to softcore, even though you're in the same geographical netherland, <laughs> you know <laughs> what, what they're doing while hands are going where they're not supposed to be. It's like, I can't see the... The Christmas tree here. What's going on? Because you know what your your mindset is different. Then you're mm -hmm. like that 18 year old young Jewish kid, like I was, and going, "Oh, I can fuck you now." And you look like a freaking idiot. <laughs> you're doing it. You oh want baby, it to be oh baby, oh baby. Yeah. The tongue, yeah. the tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> That's right. But the, but the cameraman, and it sucks because he can make or break your scene. I don't care how good looking you are. Your makeup artist, I'm good. But camera tells the whole story. There. I mean, you got to beyond with him yeah. but anyway that's my two cents i was wondering what it was yeah. thanks sean okay kelly while we're going to wrap things up anything you'd like to say to the bunch uh, before we go here oh a great group of people they all asked really intelligent questions and i hope i answered them to the best of my degree that i were my background or wherever i come from i'm very comfortable with people asking me questions these days i'm older i'm wiser I'm not in denial about what I've done. I love what I've done. I'm proud of it. So it it's all good. And I really appreciate this chance to talk to them. And I would like to do this again. Sure, certainly will. You're welcome to come back anytime. And okay. uh, I think that uh, the wife and I are going to go out to LA again, uh, probably in September, October of 2024. So when that happens, we'll certainly uh, hook up, get some pizza or whatever too. So yeah. Anyway, we'll do that. So again, uh, don't forget to check us out on uh, Twitter at Jizz Talking. And also you can check us out on our YouTube channel as well, youtube.com at Jizz Talking. You'll find us and www.jizztalking as well. So again, next week will be our Exotica preview show in Miami, and we'll see everybody next week.